Network flows. Recap of previous lecture. We have discussed K connected graphs, K edge connected graphs, Menger's theorem, and line graph. Content of this lecture we will discuss network flows, that is, maximum network flow, F augmenting path, Ford Fulkerson labeling algorithm, max flow min cut theorem and we will see the proof of Menger's theorem using max flow min cut theorem. Network and flows. Consider a network of pipes where walls allow flow in only one direction. Each pipe has a capacity per unit time. We can model this with the vertex for each junction and the directed edge for each pipe weighted by the capacity, we also assume that flow cannot accumulate at the junction. Let us see this kind of model can be represented in a form of a network. So, given two locations S and T in the network, we may ask what is the maximum flow per unit time from S to T. So, this question arises in many contexts. The network may represent the roads with the traffic capacities or links in a computer network with data transmission capacities or the currents in electrical network. There are applications in industrial settings and to the combinatorial minimax theorems. So, here we can add the capacities which can be defined as per the different applications. So, the network is a directed graph Let us see that these edges which are connecting the nodes are having a direction and also each edge is having a capacity which is denoted by C of E and there is a distinguished source and sink vertex S and T they are denoted as. The vertices are called here the nodes. So, modeling a particular network in this particular format is nothing but a network n. So, for any given graph we can convert it into a network in this particular setting and then we can it can be used up for the study of network flow problems. So, the flow f assigns a value to each edge so, in the previous figure, if we see S and T, so each edge is having a capacity and also we can assign a flow value a particular edge. So, every edge will have these two values assigned that is the flow on the edge. E, which is basically represented f of e. Let f plus be the total flow on the edges leaving v. And f minus be the total flow on the edges entering v. A flow is feasible if it satisfies the capacity constraints. So, that means the value of the flow 
is upper bounded by the capacity of that particular edge which is defined. So, obviously here in this particular scenario the value of the flow is basically bounded by or at most C e on particular edge. So, every edge has this capacity defined and the flow which will be there on that particular edge will be at most that particular value and also the flow is basically not negative hence it is greater than or equal to 0 and so on. Now, the flow also satisfies besides capacity constraints another constraint which is called a conservation constraint. So, conservation constraints says that the flow for each node other than source and sink. So, the value of the flow out for a node V should be equal to the flow which is into the node hence F plus that is the flow out on a particular node is equal to F the flow which is in to the particular node other than source and sink. So, again let us recall that there is a flow which is defined on each edge and this particular flow is feasible if it satisfies the capacity constraints and also satisfies the conservation constraints that we have defined. So, maximum network flow the value of the flow that is val of f of a flow f is the net flow that is the flow out from that particular sink to be subtracted from in to the sink. Now, if the flow there is no out from the sink then it is nothing but the flow value which is entering into the sink. If there is no flow out from the sink then the value of the flow is equal to flow which is entering into the sink. Now, the max flow is the feasible flow of the maximum value that is called the maximum flow. Let us take this particular example graph which has a flow value equal to 0 assigned to each edge and this is also a feasible flow. So, every edge the capacity is 2 and the flow is 0. So, it satisfies a feasible flow satisfies the capacity constraints meaning to say that here in for example, in the edge S u the capacity of this particular edge is 2 and the amount of flow is 0. Hence, this particular capacity constraint is satisfied on this particular edge. Similarly, in all other edges this is satisfied. Second condition for a flow to be feasible is that conservation constraint is satisfied should be satisfied for example, in this particular node u for a particular node u let us consider that the value of f u plus equal to f minus and here the flow in both the sides is 0. Hence, conservation constraint is also satisfied. Therefore, the 0 flow that is the total flow which basically will go to the sink that is the total flow is equal to 0. Hence, this is a feasible flow and this is the example of the network with a flow of 0 value. Example of a maximum flow. So, here in this particular network 
we will illustrate that it has the non zero feasible flow the capacities are shown as the bold and the flow is shown within the bracket it is the flow on the edge so our flow f assigns f of sx here that is equal to the flow on vt and both are zero here in this case similarly f on an edge e is 1 this edge it is 1 this edge also it is 1 this edge it is 1 and this edge is 1 for every other edge of this network hence this is a feasible flow of value 1 example of a maximum flow here the path from source to sink with excess capacity would allow us to increase the flow in this example no path remains with the excess capacity but a flow f prime with f prime vx is equal to 0 and f prime e is equal to 1 now for e which is not equal to vx has the value 2 so let us take an example here in this particular case we can see on this particular edge the capacity is 2 and the flow is 0 so there is a residual capacity to inject a flow on this particular edge similarly this particular edge also has the residual capacity now it has a flow from v to x hence from x to v we can do a back flow or we, we can also say it is a reverse flow possible and that capacity is 1 so if you take a path from s to x and x to v and from v to t so this particular s to x we have the capacity of 2 from x to v there is a capacity of 1 and from v to t there is a capacity of 2 so we can inject the minimum of all these values that is 1 a flow of 1 unit can be injected from source to the sink via this particular path so if we do then basically you see that here the value of the flow is changed from 0 to 1 and here since it is a back flow so 1 will become 0 here in this case similarly here the flow will become 1 and through this particular path the flow is injected and the amount of flow in this particular network it will be now this particular flow is 1 and this flow is 1 so total flow in this network is 1 plus 1 that becomes equal to 2 units of flow and that is the maximum flow possible now we have seen that we have identified a path through which we can inject a flow into the network over the residual capacity so that kind of path is called augmenting path let us see the definition when f is a feasible flow in the network n an f augmenting path is a source to sink path in the underlying graph g such that for each edge on the path that if p follows e in the forward direction then it has to follow this particular capacity constraint and if p follows e that is in the backward direction then there must be a non zero flow on that particular edge now let epsilon 
E is nothing but the residual capacity that is C E minus F E when E is a forward direction on P and let epsilon is equal to F E when E is in the backward direction on P. So, the tolerance of that particular flow or a path is nothing but the minimum of for all the edges on that particular path that particular epsilon values and that is called a tolerance. In the previous slide we have seen how to compute this particular tolerance. So, here this is nothing but we have computed the tolerance we have computed the tolerance that is by these are the epsilon values and this particular minimum of epsilon is nothing but the tolerance and this amount of values is injected onto the path and the path is and this particular value is basically introduced as an additional flow of one unit. So, F augmenting path is this particular process of identifying what is the maximum amount of flow which can be undertaken on a particular path and that is called F augmenting path. Now, when a new flow is injected through an augmenting path, so let us see what are the changes in the network will takes place. The edges of P incident to the internal vertex V of P occurs in one direction of the four different ways shown below. In each case the change to the flow out of V is the same as the change to the flow into V. Hence this is the flow out, this is the flow in and that should be equal to the same for ensuring the property which we have designated as conservation constraint. Now, let us see the examples of all these four different cases when a new flow after the augmenting is basically carried out. So, here you can see that the capacity is 6 and current flow is 4. So, there is a possibility of 2 units to be injected here. Similarly, 20 unit is also flow is also there. So, basically here we can see that 10 unit that means there is a slack of 6 units and so on. So, so if we take the minimum of all these slack units it becomes 2 units we can inject. So, if the 2 units are injected. So, here the flow in this particular which will enter is equal to the to the capacity and the slack will become 0 here in this case the flow of 10 will become 12 and here the flow of 5 will become 7 here in this case and these symbols are shown over here that means there is a possibility of forward direction flow on each vertex is possible. Now, there is another example here we can see that on the forward direction there is a possibility of plus k in this particular vertex also there is a possibility of plus k then on this particular vertex there is also a possibility of minus k and this is a minus k and plus k. So, the symbols which we have shown is of plus k and plus k similarly another possibilities another case is plus k and minus k and this is another condition where it is minus and minus and this particular condition shows it is plus and it is minus. So, all four cases we can see here in this augmenting path to be illustrated. Let us take another example 
here we can see here the total inflow is 6 plus 12 that is 18 and total outflow is 15 plus 3 that is 18 that is the conservation constraint is satisfied. So, let us see that if we can figure out what is that minimum value of that capacity constraint. The capacity is 9, the total flow here is undertaken is 6. So, there is a possibility of 3 units of residual capacity. Here also there is a possibility of 5 units of capacity. Here there is a 6 units of reverse flow possible, 4 units of reverse flow possible and 7 units of reverse flow possible. So, if you take the minimum, so 3 more, 3 units of more amount of flow which can be injected. Hence, the F augmenting path like this will allow 3 more units of the flow. After doing that, the flow values are changed accordingly that we are now seeing. So, 4 will become 7, 4 will become 1, why because 3 unit will be subtracted, it is a reverse edge, 6 unit will become 3, why because 3 units will be subtracted, because this is a reverse edge or a back edge. Now, here 3 will become 6, because it is a forward edge, 6 will become 9, why because it is a forward edge. So, after the augmenting, the new flow will be introduced into the network. So, lemma if P is an F augmenting path with the tolerance Z, then changing the flow by plus Z on the edges forward by P and minus Z on the edges followed backward by P produces a feasible flow F prime with the value of value of flow F prime is equal to the value of f plus z that we have seen in the previous example. Let us see the proof. The definition of the tolerance ensures that, that the capacity constraint is ensured for every edge. So, the capacity constraint holds. So, we need only check the vertices of p since the flow elsewhere has not changed. Now, for every vertex v conservation constraint is being followed. So, the amount of flow which is in equal to the amount of flow which will be exited from a particular vertex. Finally, the net flow into the sink T will be increased by this z value that example we have seen earlier and that is also shown here in this particular picture. Source and sink cut. So, in a network source and oblique sink cut that is also called ST cut. So, ST cut is nothing but which is denoted as S comma T consists of the edges from the source set S and to a sink set T where S and T partition the set of nodes with all the nodes small s belongs to S and T belong to T. That means, source, this is source, node belong to one set that is S and this is the sink node belong to T. So, all the other nodes are partitioned in S and T and that is called basically S T partitions. So, the capacity of this particular ST cut is written as the capacity of ST is the total capacity on the edges of S and T. That means, the total capacities of the edges which crosses from S and T. So, we can see over here S and T. So, all the edges which they crosses their capacities if we sum them in the forward direction then it is called the capacity of st in the forward directions only so keep in mind that in a diagraph st 
denotes the set of edges with the tail in S that I told you and the head in T that is only the forward direction edges. Thus, the capacity of ST cut is completely unaffected by the edges from T to S that means, it is unaffected by the back edge capacities. Fold Fulkerson labeling algorithm for max flow. In this algorithm, the input is a feasible flow F in a network and the output is an F augmenting path or a cut with a capacity value of F. So, idea of this algorithm is to find the node reachable from S by the path with the positive tolerance reaching T completes an F augmenting path. Now, during the search R is the set of the nodes labeled as the reached and S is the subset of R which are labeled as searched. Fort Fulkerson labeling algorithm. Initialization we will initialize the two sets R that is called reached, the another set S which is called a searched set. So, initialized with S and this is initialized with phi. Now, in the iteration let us choose a node V which is in R minus S this is R and this is S. Now, for each exiting edge V w with the capacity F V w is less than C of V w and w is not in R then we add w to R that means, we have reached to w in this labeling algorithm from V because there is a capacity in the forward direction. Now, for entering an edge u v with f u v with having the flow f u v as non zero that means, some flow is there and u is not in reached then we have to add u in r. So, this indicates the back flow along the f augmenting path. Now, label each vertex added to R as the reached and record V as the vertex reaching it that means, from which it has reached. After exploring all the edges at V, add V to S. Now, if sing R has been reached put in T put in R and then trace the path reaching T to report the f augmenting path and terminate. Now, if R is equal to S then return the cut that is S and S prime and terminate why because there is no f augmenting path. So, we have to return the, the mean cut otherwise we have to iterate. As long as f augmenting path is, is available the algorithm will iterate and as soon as all the argument there is no augmenting path then it will terminate and report the min cut of the network theorem max flow min cut theorem. So, in every network the maximum value of a feasible flow equals the minimum capacity of the ST cut. So, the proof says that in max flow problem the zero flow is always a feasible flow that we have seen and gives us a place to start. 
Now given a feasible flow, we apply the labeling algorithm we have seen in the previous slide that is fold, full cursion, fold, full cursion algorithm. It iteratively add the vertices to S that is each vertex at most once and terminate with T when it reached and that is why T is an element of R and then we say it is a back through that means we have identified an augmenting path which is also called as a breakthrough here. Or if it is not a augmenting path then S is equal to R and we have to report with a mean cut. So, in the breakthrough case that means when we have identified a augmenting path we have an F augmenting path and increase the flow value. We then repeat the labeling algorithm when the capacities are rational the each augmentation increases the flow by multiple of 1 by a where a is the least common multiple of the denominators. So, after every finitely many augmentation the capacity of some cut is reached the labeling algorithm then terminates with s minus s is equal to r. When terminating this way we claim that s t is the source to sink cut that is st cut with a capacity of that cut is nothing but a value f and f is the present flow it is the cut because source belongs to big s and t does not belong to r is equal to s. Since applying the labeling algorithm to the flow introduces no node of t into r no edge from s to t has access capacity and no edge from T to S has non-zero flow in F hence F plus S that means the flow out of flow out of S is nothing but the capacity of ST cut and the flow inflow of S is equal to 0. Since the net flow out of any set contains containing the source, but not the sink is the value of F. Hence, we have proved that the value of F is nothing but the flow out of source and flow into the source is 0. Hence, the total flow out of source is nothing but the capacity of the ST cut in the network and that becomes the max flow value. Examples of a fold Fulkerson algorithm. Let us apply the fold Fulkerson algorithm to determine the value of the maximum flow from source to sink. Source is S and sink is Y. So, here let us see the conventions that this is the network wherein the capacities which are placed on the edge are shown here direct values and the flow value is shown within the bracket. Which are there in the network. So, with this let us see the application of a fold Fulkerson algorithm. Now, here in this particular network we see that from from x we can reach to a or we can go to d oh it is already there so from x we can either go to a or we can go to d now x a has the residual capacity because the capacity is 3 and the flow is 0. So, it can undertake 3 units of flow. Similarly, D also can take 3 units of flow. Now, from A we can go to B and we can also go to D. So, from B from A we can go to B why because there is a possibility of residual capacity of 1 unit. 
now from b we can go to y so there is a augmenting path x a b y here there is a three unit of flow possible between x a between a b there is a one unit of flow possible and between b y there is a three unit of flow so the minimum value that is called epsilon is the minimum of all this that is called tolerance that is nothing but one unit so one unit of flow is possible let us inject that now we will see again through d so 3 that means there is a possibility with x d to take a flow from d to c also there is a possibility to take a flow and from c to y also there is a possibility to take a flow so this will become x d c and y now here x d has the capacity 3 of residual and dc has capacity of 1 and cy has capacity of 3 so minimum value becomes 1 so let us introduce this particular flow in the network now let us go ahead again and see any, any other augmenting path available or not so from x we can go to a or we can go to d so if we go to a then this particular path is already saturated a b is saturated so we cannot go ahead from a from a we can go to d and from d again we see there is a saturated there is no saturated path so d also we cannot have any progress similarly from x to d if we go then from d we cannot make any progress so here we stop and we have to take the st cut so the total amount of flow will become the st cut that is nothing but the total value which will basically out from the source that is or that is nothing but the total amount of flow which will go into the sink all are equal so let us see that f plus s we can calculate that is 1 plus 1 that equal to 2 so that is the total maximum flow in this particular network is 2 and that is all shown over here whatever we have already done so total flow in this particular example is 2 let us take another example let us find out the maximum flow now here in this particular example we can see that we can go there is a possibility we can reach a we can reach b also because a b also there is a capacity but from b we cannot go to y because there is no flow which is being undertaken from y to b so here we stop so from b we cannot go ahead now there is another way from a we can come down let us say that this is c and from c we can go to b but from b we cannot go ahead so there is no possibility from these particular ends to undertake the flow hence the max flow will be equal to the st cut why because there is no augmenting path and that is nothing but the flow will be zero which is there in this particular network now in another example let us find out the max flow in this network using port pulkerson let us directly go and see this particular work worked out solution for this particular problem so one such augmenting path which can introduce a flow of 2 which is injected and that is x then c 
then b and then from b we cannot go to y because this particular forward link is saturated but we can go to a y because there is a flow from a to b so we can introduce a back flow and we can come to a so from a we can go to e through the forward edge and from e we can go to y and this particular way if we take the minimum of all this particular flow so the flow of two unit is being introduced now from x we can go to a from a we can go to e and from e we can go to y in this way we can also introduce one more flow so when there is no augmenting path we will find out the min cut and that will be the maximum flow which will be working out in the network now we will see the menger's theorem and we will see the proof of menger's theorem using max flow min cut theorem so this is the idea that let us go ahead and see the menger's theorem of the vertex version that says that if x and y be the two distinct vertices in the connected graph such that between x and y there is no direct edge then kappa of x y is equal to lambda of x y let us see the proof of this particular theorem so to prove this kappa x y is equal to lambda x y in the menger theorem what we will do is we will show this particular proof by two different steps in the first step we will show that lambda x y is less than or equal to kappa x y and then we will show that kappa x y is greater than or equal to lambda x y using max flow min cut so kappa x y you may be knowing it it's a minimum size of x y cut and lambda x y is basically the maximum number of vertex disjoint or internally disjoint x y path so let us see the first one where lambda x y is less than or equal to kappa x y now if you take a x y cut let us call it as u that means in x and y there is a set of vertices let us call it as u then if we remove it then x and y they become disconnected when removed from the graph then it becomes disconnected hence this u is nothing but it's an x y cut now if it is an x y cut then every x y path must go through u a vertex in u the other path also will go to y through a distinct vertex in u y distinct because these paths are internally disjoint paths that is between x and y so they are internally disjoint that means no vertex can be common hence that means all the paths which will go from x to y they will be internally disjoint paths and all the vertices will be distinct so how many such vertices will be present at least that means one from each particular path if we take 
so that means the if we count how many different paths will be there between x to y that will be nothing but the size of this particular u and this size of u is nothing but this is called x y minimum x y cut hence this part of the of the theorem is proved the other part we have to see that is kappa x y is less than or equal to lambda x y now this we are going to prove using max flow and min cut theorem now to prove this using max flow min cut theorem the underlying graph we have to transform it into a network to do this we will follow some steps so step number 1 so we will construct a network n let us call n out of this particular graph g so whenever there is a network as far as max flow min cut theorem there are two designated vertices which are designated as source and sink let us say that x and y they are the source and sink respectively so here x and y they become source and y become sink of the network the second part says that for each edge uv each edge of a graph we will add two directed arcs uv and vw that is let us take an example that if there is a edge ab then we have to add two arcs a to b and b to a with these particular directions similarly all other edges will be transformed in this particular manner let us do it again for cy between c and y there will be an edge from c to y and from y to c so we will transform this graph into this particular network this is the step number 1 let us see the second step in step number 2 what we will do we will take every vertex which is not the source and sink and we will split this particular vertex w into two vertices w plus and w minus and we will place an edge between them from w minus to w plus this edge is called internal arc of the network now other arcs will be replaced by u plus that means other arc means other than other than this internal arc all other arcs which are present in the graph or in the network which we have obtained in a step number 1 will be replaced by from u plus there will be an edge to v minus if u and v they are not neither it is source nor sink so from u plus to v minus we have to add an edge similarly if u is a source or a sink then this edge will be from u to v minus similarly if v is a source or sink then there will be an edge from u plus to v so there are three different type of edges we will include and we will split the node and we will add a internal arc now after doing this we will obtain a network and then we will now place the capacities 
that means for every internal arc we will we will add a capacity of 1 so internal arc if you recall it is from a minus to a plus b minus to b plus c minus to c plus there are three different internal arcs the capacities we will include as 1 and all other edges will have the capacity of n so in this particular example here n is equal to 5 so capacity of 5 will be included so this is the third step so after third step we will obtain this network out of this particular graph so we will see the observation that every vertex of the form w minus has exactly one arc going out from it that is this arc is present but only one arc will be between w minus to w plus similarly every vertex of the form w plus has exactly one arc coming into it and which is an internal arc so if this is w minus and this is w plus so one arc is going out from w minus similarly one arc is coming into w plus which is an internal arc so only one internal arc is present between w minus to w plus now what we will do is we will show to prove that kappa x y is less than lambda x y using the network n which we have formed we will use it to show that kappa x y is less than or equal to lambda x y to show kappa x y less than lambda x y we will again further take two steps step number one we will show that lambda x y is at least max flow and then we will show in step number two that kappa x y is at most min cut and then what we will do is you know that max flow is equal to min cut now you know that if we can prove that kappa x y is at most min cut and min cut is equal to max flow by that particular theorem and also we know that the max flow is less than or equal to lambda x y therefore we can show that kappa x y is less than lambda x y so hence it remains to show that lambda x y is greater than or equal to max flow and also it remains to show that kappa x y is less than or equal to max min cut so these two things we are showing we are going to show and once we will show that then basically the theorem will be proved or we will prove that kappa x y is less than or equal to lambda x y and menger theorem will be proved accordingly let us see the first thing let us see the first part of this particular proof that lambda x y is greater than or equal to max flow now in the network n which we have formed let f be the maximum flow and the value of that maximum flow is let us say some value that is m now if there is a flow into u minus then that value must be 1 why because we have internal vertices there will be only one internal vertices from u minus it will go to u plus and that capacity is 1 the previous observation so this if we trace back this particular flow of one unit then we will find that this one unit must travel from x to y that is from source to the sink so if m units are there so m unit flow will transform into m different internally disjoint x y paths so this is one such path similarly other such path must also be there let us say u2 minus to 
u2 plus and so on so there are m internally disjoint paths must be there from x to y hence lambda means lambda x y is nothing but internally disjoint paths so if m are there so the value of lambda must be at least m and m is nothing but the maximum flow that we have assumed hence we have proved that lambda x y is at least the max flow now we will see the the remaining part of this particular proof which will see that we have to show that kappa x y is at most the min cut of that network now let us take an st cut that is the minimum cut in the network and so here if you see an st cut what we will find out the arcs which will go from s to t they belong to the internal arc only that is u minus to u plus and each is having the capacity of 1 therefore an st cut is basically of size the capacity of st cut is let us say k now let us see that if let us say that the capacity of st cut k then in that case it should be less than is less than n why because x and y so n is the total number of nodes minus 2 then the capacity should be n minus 2 at most hence strictly it is less than n now if some other edges other than the internal edge basically is present with the capacity let us say n which we have included then this capacity will not follow this particular bound then the capacity of k will be greater than or equal to n we will come to the contradiction hence it is not possible that other than internal edge or non internal edge will be a part of st cut so this particular thing we can see through this particular example that if we find out the st cut so only the internal edges are involved and each internal edge is having a capacity of 1 so that capacity of this st cut is bounded by n minus 2 that is strictly less than n let us take the st cut k of minimum size in the network and we will see that this particular capacity of that minimum cut is nothing but u so what we will do is we will construct a u so u is nothing but they are the number of vertices and u minus is there in s and u plus is there in t so the cardinality of u is nothing but the capacity of k and that is nothing but the minimum cut and we will show that u is an x y cut in g and that will prove that kappa x and y is at most the size of u and which is nothing but the capacity of that k and that is nothing but the minimum cut so if that is to be constructed then we will have different paths so path p will start from source to sink followed by different internal vertices u1 u2 and so on up to ut now in this particular path if we see the network we will have a directed path corresponding so starting from the source it will be having an edge from x to u minus 
and from u minus to u plus this is an internal edge this arc we have already defined that it will if it is from source so that means u to u minus so basically source to u minus it will enter and so on similarly here in the last arc will be from u plus to y now if you delete these nodes then it will disconnect s and t hence it is an st cut so deleting the internal arcs from s to t will break the path transforming back to g deleting these vertices in u from g will separate x and y hence u is an xy cut of g therefore we have shown that kappa xy is at most the minimum cut hence we have proved this particular theorem conclusion in this lecture we have discussed the network flow problems maximum network flows f augmenting path ford fulkerson labeling algorithm we have seen the examples based on ford fulkerson labeling algorithm max flow min cut theorem proof of menger's theorem using max flow min cut theorem upcoming lectures we will discuss graph coloring vertex coloring and upper bounds thank you